but uh, Q2 number from West Farmers really boosting the overall print for the first half. That's right. Well, West Farmers posting a jump in sales despite that very tough retail environment. Of course, the focus is on its Coles business. Its food and liquor sales have improved 4.3% and Coles sales rose 7.3% in the last six months from the previous period last year. And from a quick look at those numbers, it does look like Coles is at least on par, if not outperforming Woolworths. Now, the sale numbers are up 6.7%. That compares very favourably with Woolworths, if not, um, and it's much better than analysts' expectations. Its customer growth is also very strong and West Farmers Managing Director has come out to say that the period has delivered a record-breaking Christmas. So it seems like its customers are responding very well to its advertising campaign and improvement in price and quality. Um, Bunning sales were also higher, that's up 5.5%. But as you said, in, on the flip side, we did see a negative sale number for Kmart and Target. Kmart sales are down 1.3% while Target fell 2.5%. So a strong overall result from West Farmers and we'll be watching to see how Woolworths responds to that loss in market share. Aussie, Aussie uh, surging overnight to a fresh three-month high. Seems Julie Gillard's comments on the Aussie yesterday really came at quite a good time. That's right, the Aussie dollar going from strength to strength and it is at 107.1 US cents at the moment. It's trading at three months high, adding almost one cent from yesterday. But that does cast a shadow, as you mentioned, over those companies that do rely on those overseas earnings. So what we've seen is Re uh, ResMed, they've been making headlines recently after beating its 2012 EPS estimate. Its shares were almost up about 7% in the last three days, but that's going to come under pressure. Its gross margins are going to be heavily impacted with 70% of its production costs in the Aussie dollar. Um, CSL is another one. 90% of its revenue is generated overseas and Orica is also another one to watch for. It loses almost $3 million in profit for every one cent gained in the Aussie dollar against the US dollar and that's been down about 1%. Uh, even the miners are going to start to feel pressure. Miners do sell their end products in US dollar terms. So the Aussie dollar going from strength to strength but we'll be watching very carefully to see how that impacts on company earnings in 2012. If we look ahead for the Aussie dollar is going to be Euro debt decisions that's expected by Sunday, RBA, RBA rates next week and the US jobs data number out this weekend. That's going to be key for that risk currency. So big moves on currency markets, the Aussie dollar almost one cent higher from yesterday and there are expectations for the Aussie dollar to go even higher past 108 US cents. In the market up currently around 1.2% so we have followed that positive lead from offshore. Are we expecting it uh, to be maintained throughout the session? Well, absolutely. We did have that disappointing day yesterday, but a strong start this morning. And hopefully, we will continue to see that momentum throughout the day. Uh, that was because of those strong gains in the financials and materials stocks offshore. BHP and Rio were both up over 2%. And that strong performance in the US, as you mentioned, that's going to drive our market. US stocks were sharply higher after four straight days of losses. And our, our market hasn't done much better either in the last four days. Um, we did have that positive US manufacturing data showing the fastest growth since June. We are also seeing some support for the energy stocks as well with oil companies advancing overnight. Um, but there's plenty of company news in focus. We've already spoken about TPG. Um, that's been interesting in terms of the private equity ac activity. Um, uh, also Macquarie is also making headlines as well bidding for Deutsche Bank's management arm against uh, JP Morgan, State Street and Ameriprise. The markets will also continue to watch Fairfax today and that is, that's because of reports that Gina Reinhart now holds just under 13% of the media holding. So plenty to watch for on the Australian share market and I'm sure that momentum will continue throughout the day.